l'homophobie des banlieues. Homophobia in neighborhoods like mine is a constant thing. It's impossible to be gay here without hiding it. Lies is a 22-year-old gay man. He spent his entire life in Gennevilliers, a suburb northwest of Paris. He's the target of homophobic insults, mockery and harassment by his neighbors on a daily basis. For security reasons, he chose to meet us in downtown Paris. He's also chosen to speak to us without concealing his identity, despite the risk of backlash or reprisals. When I leave my apartment, there's a group of people who insult me. You dirty faggot, you nasty homo. One time, I had a glass bottle thrown at me. Another time, a guy followed me and spat on my face. I was furious. I felt completely humiliated. It's already hard here to accept that you're gay. So this kind of oppression and these slurs make life really difficult. Lies has also decided to speak out in order to denounce the downplaying of homophobic acts. In his experience, his aggressors systematically hide behind Islam to justify their homophobia. He's filed complaints with authorities several times, but none of them have led to convictions. So in order to put an end to his isolation, Lies has turned to local organizations. We will help you out. You've identified several aggressors and there has to be some sort of a legal consequence to their acts. Lies is far from alone. Every day in France, a number of people are verbally or physically attacked because of their sexual orientation. In recent years, homophobic acts have become more widely publicized in French media, especially since 2013. Back then, the debate over whether to legalize gay marriage shook France to its core. One consequence of the fiery public debate was a significant increase in homophobic acts. Wilfred was one of the victims of homophobia at the time. After leaving a bar one night with his boyfriend, he was attacked and beaten up by several men. The picture of his bruised and swollen face was shared by thousands on social media. Overnight, Wilfred became the symbol of homophobia. I can't deny the attack has left a mark on me. There's been a lasting impact. Often, I don't feel safe. I hear slurs like faggot. I see all the incidents that have taken place since 2013. The guys who got beaten up because they're gay. I think there's still a long road ahead of us. In a 2017 report, the French Ministry of Interior mentioned over 1,000 homophobic acts in one year, about three each day. But Joël Demier, a lawyer specializing in LGBT matters, believes those numbers are actually 10 times greater. He regrets the fact that victims don't always file complaints because of a fear of reprisals. Homophobia is a punishable offense. So in a court of law, someone who has carried out a homophobic act or has made homophobic remarks will be punished, either with jail time or with a fine. Montpellier, in the south of France, is considered as one of the country's most gay-friendly cities. It's also where France's first same-sex marriage was held five years ago. We're here to meet with four LGBT men and women. Miriam, Adi, Kamara and Mikael are from Mali, Guinea and Israel. They have one thing in common. They've all been kicked out of their homes by their families. I was a victim of homophobia back in Mali, and it happened to me here in France as well. Mikael is 21. He's also transgender. His life was turned upside down when he told his family he wanted to become a man. He was forced to leave the family home. Mikael then contacted Le Refuge, the shelter, an organization that has helped 7,000 young men and women in need since its establishment in 2003. When I started questioning my gender, when I started feeling unhappy in my own body, I got really depressed. I told my family about it. I told them that I wanted to become a man and that I felt like a man. They told me, good for you, but we are not okay with it. And you're no longer a part of this family. Through the years, Le Refuge has become a second home for many of these young men and women. Some of them have managed to find a job and earn a living, and they sometimes return here to update everyone on how they're doing. But many LGBT men and women who have been rejected by their families don't succeed in turning their lives around. 
The suicide rate among LGBT youth is three to seven times higher than the general population.